Good morning, Captain. Good morning, Captain. You there. You're aware that you're to salute your commanding officer. Oh, I'm aware. That's why I didn't salute. Time for this captain to walk the plank. Oh. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Food Theory, the show that stays crunchy even in milk. Theorists, if you're anything like me, there's nothing worse than soggy breakfast cereal. Well, maybe cereal that tastes like green onions. Or cereal that tastes like cardboard. I, I guess finding out your favorite cereal mascot is inbred is pretty bad too. You know what? Maybe there are a few things worse than soggy cereal, but soggy cereal is still definitely up there on the list. And that is precisely why in 1963, the Quaker Oats Company launched Cap'n Crunch, a cereal that supposedly stays crunchy in milk longer than other cereals. It's Captain Crunch, the cereal named after me. Captain Crunch, delightfully sweet, sugar sweet, and fun to munch because it keeps its crunch. So crisp, it never uncrunches, not even in milk. Now, anybody for a bowl of Captain Crunch? What the captain is neglecting to tell everyone is that not only does it stay crunchy in milk, it also feels like glass shards on the roof of your mouth. Now, Captain Crunch cereal isn't sold worldwide, so in case you live far across the seven seas and are unfamiliar with the titular character, here's the backstory on old Captain Horatio Magellan Crunch. Yes, that is his real canonical name. Since his earliest television commercials, the jolly silver-haired captain has sailed the soggy seas on a ship, the SS Guppy, with his crew of misfit children and his first mate, Sea Dog. His quest? to defend the secret of their serial signature crunch from the likes of his arch nemesis, the barefooted pirate Jean Lafoot. And for decades, it was nothing but smooth sailing for the captain. His serial was a hit, and, uh, well, no one was accusing him of violating United States federal law. But one of those things would have to change in 2013, and you guessed it, it was the federal law thing. You see, Captain Crunch is a lot of things. By the end of today's episode, you'll understand that he's a con artist, he's a liar, he's a thief, and he may even be a murderer. But one thing he is most certainly not is a captain. So hold your nose and close your eyes, theorists, because today we're diving into why Captain Crunch is not only headed to jail, but is quite possibly the most dishonorable food mascot of all time. To understand today's theory, you first have to understand the Stolen Valor Act of 2013. There was one from 2005 as well, signed into law by then-President George W. Bush, but the one we're talking about today is one signed under the Obama administration. Now, I imagine most countries simply call it impersonating a military officer, or something along those lines, but here in the States, stolen valor is the cool way we refer to the act of fraudulently claiming to have served in the military, or embellishing one's rank within the military, or lying about having received certain valor awards. And doing any of those things is literally a federal crime. A crime that a certain serial mascot running around falsely calling himself a captain may just be violating. Now, we have to keep in mind that Horatio Crime Crunch here would only be guilty of stolen valor if he was wearing a U.S. military uniform. If he were lying about his rank as a member of, say, the Queen's Guard, he wouldn't be in violation of the U.S.'s Stolen Valor Act. So can we confirm that Captain Crunch is indeed wearing a U.S. naval uniform? Indeed we can. Now, it may not resemble contemporary U.S. naval uniforms too closely, but if we turn the clock back to the 1800s, it is clear that all the distinctive components of Captain Crunch's uniform were in fact once utilized in real life by by the U.S. Navy. The epaulets on the shoulders, the bicorn hat, the white trousers with a high-collared blue coat, even the tails, which the captain wore in some of the earliest commercials. So let's first take a closer look at Captain Crunch's uniform. That is not the uniform of a captain in the U.S. Navy, and we can tell based on the stripes on his sleeve. Over the course of the decades-long television commercial campaign, we've seen captain with one, two, and three stripes on his sleeves, indicating the ranks of ensign, lieutenant, and commander respectively, but at no point has his sleeve ever displayed four stripes, which would denote the rank of a captain. At best, it would seem that he's risen to the rank of a U.S. Navy commander, a rank that is one level lower than captain. And our source for that is the U.S. Navy itself. That's right, the Navy has actually weighed in to confirm this. As Lieutenant Commander Sarah Flaherty, a U.S. Navy spokesperson, stated in 
2013 quote, Captain Crunch appears to be wearing the rank of a US Navy commander. So why then does he refer to himself as a captain? Well, after years of being badgered with these types of questions, the captain finally defended himself on Twitter, which honestly was his first mistake. D no, not on Twitter, Captain. Defensive Twitter threads will never work because people like me will tear apart everything you say and hold it against you. Anyway, he responded with the following quote, a naval officer of any rank will have the title captain because whoever is in charge of a ship assumes the title of captain, which gotta say is a very valid point, Horatio, except for the fact that it doesn't apply to you because you are not a naval officer. That's right, Lieutenant Commander Sarah Flaherty once again weighed in on behalf of the US Navy saying, quote, our personnel records do not show a Captain Crunch who currently serves or has ever served in the Navy. Oh, snap, crackle, pop. You just got dunked on by the US Navy. Let's drop anchor for a moment to unpack all this. Captain Crunch isn't merely exaggerating his military rank. He is straight up lying about his military service altogether. This would definitely explain why his uniform is pieced together like he's some kind of historical cosplayer. But if you don't believe the military records, then turn your attention to his ship, the SS Guppy. See, SS is a prefix used for civilian ships, often indicating that the ship is a screw steamer, or in more layman's terms, a steamship. Were he captaining a US naval ship, that ship would almost certainly have a non-civilian prefix. It would be called, say, the USS Guppy, meaning the United States ship Guppy, or perhaps even the USF Guppy, where it'd be classified as a United States frigate. So we know Horatio has never been enlisted in the US Navy. We know that he's dressed in a legit US Naval uniform, and we know his intent is to be perceived as a US Naval officer, all to sell you more glass shards that you can drown in milk for your morning cereal, part of a balanced breakfast. As of the day this video was made, Captain Crunch cereal is still cashing in on Horatio's fraudulent military persona to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars per year in sales. The fact that the Captain Crunch's lie is being perpetuated for the sake of financial gain makes it a clear-cut violation of the Stolen Valor Act. And mind you, these questions date back to 2013. Captain Crunch has had years to ditch the uniform, to lose the title of captain, or, you know, even apologize once. But Captain Crunch has shown no such contrition. This is no light-hearted, oops, I'll bury type of situation here, people. Now, I realize this may come as a surprise to some of you. After all, Captain Crunch has a real wholesome grandpa vibe about him. But here's the real tea theorists. Stolen Valor is just the first of Horatio's crimes. Consider this. On June 25th, 2012, Crunch's arch nemesis Jean Lafoot made an attempt to steal the captain's supply of cereal. He live tweeted the whole affair, managing to infiltrate the SS Guppy and take control of the ship. I wouldn't have thought tweeting out your crimes was a good idea, but then again, hey, maybe that's what it takes for a 21st century pirate to build their brand. At this point, though, things start to take a turn. Shortly after realizing he didn't know how to steer the ship, Lafoot was bitten by Captain Crunch's first mate, Sea Dog, and was forced to jump overboard to escape. Now, this wouldn't normally raise any eyebrows. After all, Jean Lafoot live tweeted many of his prior failed attempts to steal Captain Crunch's cereal. But here's what's chilling about Lafoot's 2012 tweet about jumping overboard. He hasn't tweeted since. Go take a look for yourself. The real Jean Lafoot Twitter account has been dead silent for over eight and a half years. This implies that he jumped overboard but was unable to make it back to civilization, flat out dying amongst the open seas. Now, that alone would be tragic, but what's worse is that two minutes after Lafoot's final tweet, a remorseless Captain Crunch tweeted, hit the road, real Jean Lafoot, or should I say, hit the water. Horatio, my man, was this the time to make a joke? Yeah, Lafoot was trying to steal your ship, but is that really an excuse to smugly watch as he drowns at sea? Look, I get that Captain Crunch and Jean Lafoot were nemeses for decades, but they had some good times over those years too. They shared a love for Captain Crunch cereal. They competed against each other in friendly competitions. In fact, they even joined forces to help market Jean Lafoot's Cinnamon Crunch cereal. And after all that history together, Captain Crunch just stands there on the deck of the SS Guppy, drafting the perfect clapback tweet while his frenemy drowns before his very eyes? I mean, honestly, what kind of a person is Horatio Magellan Crunch? How about the kind of person who abandons his pet dog? Folks, I wish I were making this up, but I'm not. Sea Dog, Captain Crunch's trusty first mate who's been at Horatio's side since the very, very beginning, has been conspicuously absent for a while now. Seems the last sea 
dog sighting was in 2015 on Twitter. Yep, even the dog has an official Twitter page, though I'm not sure you could call what he does tweeting. It is literally just him howling. But the point is, Captain Crunch used to tag him in tweets all the time, even referring to him as his first mate and constant companion. However, since Sea Dog's last tweet in 2015, Captain Crunch has not mentioned Sea Dog once, and he has actively ignored any and all tweets from fans that mention Sea Dog. Now, Sea Dog's Twitter bio seems to suggest that he's back on dry land now and quite happy about it, except it's written in English. Folks, scroll through Sea Dog's tweet history if you need a refresher, but it has firmly been established that Sea Dog is not capable of writing that bio. Someone else had to have written it. Once more, there have been numerous commercials since 2015 that plainly show Captain Crunch is back at sea. So I gotta ask Captain, hashtag where's Sea Dog? Are we to believe that Captain Crunch's first mate and loyal companion just retired one day after 50 plus years and then also magically learned English? Or is it more likely that the Twitter bio was penned by Sea Dog's beloved master, Horatio Magellan Crunch, who's committed federal crimes, who has gleefully watched a man die in front of him, and who now appears to be papering over the death or disappearance of his loyal pet. Folks, I don't know what's become a Sea Dog, but the best case scenario here is that he's merely been abandoned by his master. I hold out hope that Sea Dog is living his best life out there on dry land right now, but frankly, I doubt it. If Sea Dog were truly okay, wouldn't he just be howling at us on Twitter? What we can prove, my friends, is that Captain Crunch has violated federal law. What we cannot prove are the whereabouts of anyone and everyone who's ever been close to Captain Crunch. LaFoot, Sea Dog, the crew of misfit children that just for whatever reason are no longer at the captain's side. As a result, the captain sails the seas alone, answering the call of anyone that speaks his name, even if they're a full-grown adult. Crunch your ties, me, Captain. Adventure. Perhaps the captain harbors hopes of replenishing his ranks and returning to his former glory. Perhaps he's seeking out his next victim. Or perhaps it's all part of a brand new scam. But I can tell you these two things for certain. One, that we've been underestimating this dangerous serial mascot for far too long. And two, we owe a boatload of gratitude to the sponsor for today's episode, Bright Sellers. Theorists, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm not the biggest imbiber on the block, but I am the type of guy who enjoys learning about wines and spirits. And that's what makes Bright Cellars such a great option for me. Not only do they send a personalized box of wine straight to my door each and every month, but they include wine education cards that give great insights into the bottles that they're sending. I've received quite a few shipments from them at this point, and my life has improved in two very concrete ways as a result. First, my brain is now absolutely jam-packed with wine facts from all these cards. My father-in-law, who is a big wine guy, has been super impressed with my newfound wine knowledge. He's also been impressed with the unique selections that Bright Cellar's been supplying me with. I look cultured, all thanks to a box that arrives on my doorstep each and every month. Secondly though, Bright Cellar's has me rate the wines they send each month. Then they incorporate that feedback into their next shipment for me. That means that every month, their wines are increasingly tailored to my unique tastes. And it really works. The latest shipment was really spot on. Three months ago, if you had asked me, I would have told you I was a Chardonnay guy. No question about it. But Bright Cellar's algorithm has actually helped me realize that I'm more of a Riesling guy than I thought. Thank you, science. Thank you, algorithms. And thank you to Bright Sellers, who has currently given our followers an exclusive 50% off their first six-bottle box, plus a bonus bottle. That is seven bottles total for half the price. Follow my link below to take the quiz, learn a little bit about your wine self, and get started. And always remember, friends, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit.